In the name of Jesus, I speak. So before we pray, we're going to continue with uh, uh, our message here from the book of Haggai. So we turn to the book of Haggai. On the first day, we talk about uh, briefly touch on uh, chapter one. Right? Um, <coughs> how the uh, guy uh, through uh, God's inspiration, uh, tried to revive the faith uh, of the leaders and the people to rebuild the temple of God. Right? Now, as we know that they have been uh, opposed uh, by uh, fierce opposition. And so the work has stopped for about 16 years. Right? Now when we read the book of Haggai, we realize that God actually did not talk about the opposition. Right? Rather, God talks about uh, their ways of life. And God asked them to think about how they uh, conduct their life for the past many years. Right? So, and um, uh, thankfully, we find that these people obeyed the voice of the Lord. Okay. Uh, now, uh, because of the obedience to uh, the God's voice, and this fear for God uh, was generated. Right. Now we read um, verse 14, yeah? chapter 1, verse 14 again. Uh, chapter 1, verse 14. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Jerobabel, the son of Shittel, governor of Judah, <coughs> And the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, uh, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnants of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Right? Now, having uh, thought through their ways and the way they conducted themselves, we see that here God uh, began to work. Right? So when this fear for God is generated, yeah, so uh, God can easily stir up the spirit of these people to work and to rebuild the temple. So, in order to revive our work, yeah, we do not just uh, think about uh, plan or whatever. I think that sometimes, uh, very crucially, we need to look at our ways as well. Right? So, in so far as we are willing to obey the voice of the Lord, then God will begin to stir up the spirit amongst us to work. I think that is the that is the method yeah, adopted here by Haggai. Right? So I think in any church work or in any um, rebuilding work, right? so we must not be uh, dampened uh, by difficult circumstances in our zeal. Right? Sometimes we can be weakened uh, because of the circumstances in which we are. I think uh, we need to uh, look into ourselves more and look at our own ways and so that in our heart there is always this uh, fear for God. Right? So in this way, then God can stir up us, uh, stir us up uh, to serve. Okay, now we come to uh, chapter two, uh, right? chapter two of Haggai. Uh, chapter two, we look at uh, a few points here. Verse three, chapter two, verse three. Uh, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory, and how do you see it now, in comparison with it? Is this not in your eyes? There's nothing. All right. The question here are like a question directed uh, to enable them to have this uh, self-realization. Right. I think sometimes if we want to serve God, uh, this self-realization of duty is crucial. And we compare our present state uh, with previous years, of those previous years. Probably we'll come to an understanding that... Uh, now our spiritual state is not as good as before. Right? Then we begin to ask, why is it so? And what has happened to us? Right? So this is this sense of self-realization that enables us to uh, basically understand ourselves better. Right? Okay. Now, in verse four here it says, "Yet now be strong, uh, Jerubbabel," says the Lord, "and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak." the high priest and be strong all you people of the land says the Lord and work for I am with you says the Lord of hosts now having looked into ourselves yeah, we need to uh, trust uh, in uh, the 
power of God. Huh? Now, I think to be strong, yeah? to be strong is not something impulsive. Huh? I think to be strong here, according to Haggai, yeah, this being strengthened comes from uh, our understanding of the the word uh, that God has given to them, as indicated in verse five. Right? Today I'm strong in faith because I believe in the word of God. Right? So being strong is not is not a, a sense of being impulsive. Right? So being strong means I know the word of God. I know how what to do. And I know how to uh, con- conduct myself in in difficult circumstances. That is being strong, right? Okay. Now, one other point I want to uh, bring to your attention uh, is in verse nine. Right? Verse nine. Uh, the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Now I think we have been taught uh, uh, since young that the establishment of the true church at the end time, uh, her glory shall be uh, shall be greater you know, than the formal uh, church that is in the time of the apostle. Now, how do we measure it? Obviously, there's no need. Uh, obviously, there's no need for us to measure. But what is he talking about here? I think in verse nine, he gives us an indication. And in this place, I'll, I'll give peace, says the Lord of hosts. So, I think when you look at the um, um, Old Testament scriptures, yeah, um, like in the time of uh, Micah or Isaiah, you know, God raised up different prophets to tell, to warn the people that uh, there shall be no peace. No peace shall be given to them. Why? You know, I think one of the reason is because they have uh, deviated from the right path, right? Uh, instead of worshiping God, uh, they have adopted uh, pagans' uh, ways of worship, and so God decided to to leave them. So no peace was given, right? Now, so as a result, right, they suffered uh, this um, uh, Babylonian captivity right, because God uh, had decided not to protect them. Right? Now, with this understanding, when you look at the uh, the New Testament scriptures. Yeah? You find that we all know that uh, the apostolic church eventually suffered an uh, earthly demise right? because they died. The Spirit left the church. Right? Why? There are two reasons. If you look at look at it uh, carefully, the first is because there is confusion within, right? in terms of uh, uh, living together as one family, uh, that become that became a problem, right? I think the most serious problem is because later on, you know, the church adopted uh, not the truth of God, right? allowed uh, this uh, heres- heretic incursion to occur in the church, and as a result, God left the church. Right? There was no peace. But today, I think uh, we are different. Even though the church might be going through a tough period of time, but the Lord has promised that He shall abide with the church. Right. Now I want you to read uh, two passages. Uh, we first read Isaiah. Isaiah chapter five. Uh, this is the uh, the first part is the uh, the vineyard song. Right? Uh, chapter five we read uh, the six. Right? Isaiah chapter 5 verse 6 It will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned or dug, but this but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that there rain no rains on it. Right? Now it's like description given saying that God uh, has decided to desert uh, his vineyard totally. Right? And then the description given here is that this briar and thorn shall grow. Right. Right. Now, if you look at uh, uh, chapter 27, you can see a marked difference here. Right. There's a huge difference. Uh, chapter 27, we read, um, 
verse 2 to verse 4 yeah uh, here again is another vineyard songs yeah but what is the difference i uh, just uh, uh, read verse 3 i the lord keep it i water it every moment uh, lest any hurt it i keep it night and day all right now in the previous one in chapter 5 yeah there shall be no rain and here we find that what um, uh, it shall be watered this vineyard shall be watered yeah now verse 4 here it says fury is not in me who would set briars and thorns against me in battle i would go through them i would burn them all together so you find that god would fight against these thorns and briars uh, in the in the revival of the vineyard here this is the one thing that god would do and then immediately after that in verse 5 he said make peace with me right so man must draw close to god by following his ways right? then peace peace shall be given uh, so uh, you know this uh, 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 thorns and briars according to scriptures can refer to uh, corruptions uh, false teachings and so on and so forth and we believe that the true jesus church yeah, shall be more glorious uh, than the formal church if we can uh, have the peace from god meaning if we can allow god to fight for us yeah, in getting rid of briars and thorns right? i think that's why we are here to be trained to know the words of god better so that we are equipped yeah, to not only to preach the word of god and we are also can be better equipped to defend our faith right and this way if we can hold on to the truth of god then we shall always see the peace of god remains in the church right so i believe this is our prayer and this is also our hope right um, uh, all of you are the, the, the next generation workers of God. Uh, so I think the church has a uh, high hope on you. Uh, so you must always uh, keep uh, this peace of God by obeying uh, what you have learned and what you have, what you have received. Right? Uh, now we are going to pray. Uh, so for those who need to lay hands, uh, please come forward.